Hi, this is Amy Lewis with Solid Fire, and I'm here with Peter. Peter, can you introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Peter. I'm uh, from Cisco. <laughs> Excellent. Welcome. <laughs> did, did you want the title? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> Your choice. It comes up on the lower third, one way or the other. Well, then we're, we don't have to worry about it. I'm Peter. <laughs> so what's the first time you heard the word cloud in a business context? Well, remember, I did buy a domain called cloud.com at one point, but no, it wasn't cloud. Uh, this is an interesting story. We were just talking about it. Um, about I guess this, this is eight, ten years ago, probably longer than that. It was before Amazon really took off with regards to what they were doing. I was working at Sun, and with uh, Greg Papadopoulos, not Snuffleupagus, Greg Papadopoulos, their CTO, uh, he worked on a, he, he was working on this theory called Project Redshift. Um, I know we all hear about Amazon Redshift now. Redshift as a code name is actually kind of interesting. It's the, uh, it's, 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 I believe it's the color fragmentation that happens at the point at the expansion of the universe, right? There's blue shift was shrinking, redshift is expanding. And his, 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 uh, his fundamental theory in Project Redshift was that as pipes open up, as bandwidth gets bigger, and people move to a more distributed type compute environment, all of the, all the world needs, all of the organizations around the world, all we needed were five big computers. And it, it's kind of funny because, you know, you're always asked, well, okay, Greg, name five big computers. What are you talking about? And it was funny because he would say, okay, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Salesforce, and some large Chinese organization. And I think when you, when you think about that today, and we think about cloud today, who are the, who are the big cloud vendors? We, we can all agree that the, the big three um, of Google, Amazon, and Azure, they kind of own public cloud. Um, business cloud, Salesforce has kind of done a damn good job with that. Um, and then we all know that something's going on in China, uh, even if it, if, if, even if we don't all know about it just yet. Um, but I think, you know, you think about that, 10 years ago to have the insight to see where we are today and recognize that there, it's not as, while it's a world of clouds, it's not a world of many very large clouds. There's a fairly small group that basically um, manage the largest workloads across the cloud, and then the rest of the ones that we see, they happen to be you know, service providers or private clouds or what have you. They're almost more application delivery networks um, for how do you basically maximize and get certain data and apps closer to the user, but it always ties right back up into those big five systems that are running the world's businesses today. So while not referenced as cloud, the concept itself is very much what we've seen kind of come to light here over the last, what, 10 years? So has the evolution surprised you, the speed of it, or the fact that this came to pass, or what are some of the other things that have been a surprise on that journey? Um, you, you know what, I think, uh, that's, a, that's a great question. I think, it, had you asked me five years ago with regards to cloud and the cloud evolution, I would say we were moving pretty slow. And we were moving slow probably more because there was that, that uh, uh, general um, head in the sand movement by the CIOs or IT staff that said, I don't need to worry about this just yet, or you know, it's the same thing that happened with Linux. It's too complex, it's too insecure, we can't do this, there's no way. And then you had the developers off building stuff with the swipe of the credit card and, and, and doing whatever have you. The first five years, they were kind of slow because you had to be very technical. You had to understand fairly complex languages. You had to really understand how do you build, because, I mean, come on, Amazon was the Home Depot of the cloud. You had to know where the bins were and what you had to go do. Nobody's going to do it for you. So so there wasn't that that business interface for the cloud um, five, year, well, five, five plus years ago. Today, I would say the exact opposite. This thing is moving so fast, whether it's you know all the innovation happening now because of the cloud, so you see software-based companies, you see what you guys did at Solid Fire, to you know, new retail experiences, new connected automobile experiences, the whole movement around IoT, it all ties back into that fabric of the cloud. And every day I, I, I learn of a new innovation or a new adoption or see a new business that has basically built everything on the cloud that you probably wouldn't have expected. Um, uh, five years ago. So I guess that's the way I'd answer it. At first it was slow, now it's like so fast you can't even keep up with it. So in five years, do you predict that we'll, <laughs> we'll still be able to blame the network or will we blame the cloud? No, we'll just blame you. Um, <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, I, 
I don't know that we can necessarily say that the network's the problem today. Um, uh, and I think, you know, when you look at the last 10 years of cloud, it was about taking legacy applications and moving it into a more distributed or virtual environment. You didn't change the application paradigm. Now with all the new languages, with everything that's going on with regards to whether it's PaaS or microservices or what have you, everybody is designing for the new distributed environment. They're designing for failure. They're designing for, I mean, we look at what we're doing even with Metapod. We have a customer whose average life cycle of the VM that they run is less than a minute. It's instantiate, deliver the app, do the thing, and shut down. There's not much time for errors at that point, right? So, so the reality is I think as, as we start to see more cloud native applications, we're going to blame it more on our own stupidity than the infrastructure running underneath. Because at the end of the day, all of these new tools are abstracting up if, if, if it's if the things underneath break, they're built with the resilience and the, 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 the kind of autonomic capabilities to go address it on their own without having any human interaction. Uh, it sounds like a great, brave new world. No idea. <laughs> I'm an econ guy, remember. I don't know what I'm talking about. Thank you so much, Peter. You got it. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Pop-Up Tech Talks.